Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. Can you think of anything that's more subject to causes and conditions that are beyond our control, beyond our having any input into them than birth and death? Maybe living in between, we have a little bit of say on, but the birth part, totally random. The death part, likewise, totally random. Sperm meets egg at a particular perfect moment, and then cells start dividing and multiplying, and then differentiating, and then the next thing you know, birth. Which is also rebirth, by the way. Um, death, it can come at any time. And even when there's the moment of death, it's not like there's a light switch that suddenly flicks off and all the cells simultaneously shut down. Even that is just continuation of that whole continuum that started at birth that ended up in physical death. As soon as we're born, we're on that slow, maybe not so slow, maybe gradual incline, maybe not so gradual inclined to death. That's just how it works. As much as that might make us uncomfortable, that's the fact. Can't deny it. Your actions in the life part could have some impact as to whether there's a rebirth, but starts at birth, ends in death. I've got a couple of cat tales for you. They're not cute kitten memes, perhaps, but there are a couple of stories about cats. First one is a little bit more heartwarming than the second, admittedly. So at Cambridge Zen Center, Sung San was there teaching, and the temple cat, conveniently named Katsi, uh, died. They gave it a Buddhist funeral, the whole deal. And this little girl named Gita was perplexed by it, troubled by it. So she sought out Sung San one day and asked, Zen Master, where did Katsi go? Sung San replied, where do you come from? Gita said, my mother's belly. Where did your mother come from? Gita was silent. Sung San went on to say that everything in the world is made of one thing. It's like a cookie factory. There's dough, and then it gets cut up into different shapes and all that, lions, tigers, elephants, whatever the box of animal crackers might have in it. But it's all the same dough that makes them. And you bite into one 
you're biting into all of them because they're all part of that same cookie dough. They're all going to taste the same. We just give them names of different things. So he went on to say, we see that and we call it cat. We see that, we call it dog. We see elephant, we call it elephant and so on. Sun, moon, name of phenomena, and we've got a name for it. But the cat doesn't think I'm a cat, so far as we're aware anyway. Given the way cats behave, sometimes you might wonder. But the moon doesn't say, oh yeah, I'm the moon. I've got some real mooniness to me. As if that's somehow different than the sun or the cat or the dog. So, Sung San at that point said, um, What is this to Gita? How should you answer? And Gita was silent. So, so, so Sung San says to her, ask me, she asks. And Sung San's response was, and I'll use this because the floor is too far away. Cats! Sung San prodded her and, and asked him some more questions. And his response was, cats, cats. And then he started asking her some questions and her response was, cats, cats. Then she remarked how that when her teacher asked her questions in school, that she wouldn't reply with cats and they had a big laugh and she's leaving and she pokes her head back in and says, you never said where Katsi went. And Sung San's response to that was, you already know. The uh, second of the two cat tales is one you might be familiar with. There are these two monks, one's from the east side of the temple, the other one's from the west side, and they're arguing about a cat. I'm not quite sure what, but they're arguing about it. Who gets to take care of it? Who wants it? Who doesn't want it? Don't know. Doesn't matter. Masters Nan Kwan comes upon them. And he grabs the cat and he grabs a knife and he says to the two monks, if one of you can give me a true word of Zen, I'll save this cat's life. And the monks were both silent, mouths agape, unable to say anything. At which point, Nan Kwan, Cat's cut in half. Zhao Zhou <clears throat> comes by later on, and uh, Nan Quan tells him <clears throat> what happened. And Nan Quan proceeds to tell him, and that probably would explain the cat blood all over him and the dead cat laying at his feet. Zhao Zhou's response was silence, put his sandals on his head, and left. And Nan Quan calls after him, if you'd been here, the cat would still be alive. 
Now, without getting too hung up on East West, Cat Cut and Two, you know, the the less than subtle nods to duality. The less than subtle nod to the sword of Manjushri. What was different about Zhao Zhou's silence and the other two monks' silence? Zhao Zhou didn't think about it. He didn't need to think about it. He reacted intuitively, straight out from the gut. Bang. Sandals on head, off he goes. He didn't have to think twice about all that. He just acted according to his Buddha nature. It was his version of thoughts. I would like to think that the one word he would have used would have been moo, since that would be cute and his stock animal answer, I guess, but he didn't. That's, you know, just me thinking of what would be cute. Um, so recently, um, I've had some direct encounters with death. Not of myself, obviously, but some people uh, that I've been close to at one point or another. I mean, back in June, my mother died. And then just recently, there have been a few. Uh, one was a guitar player who was in a band that I used to play with, a couple of bands, in fact. And uh, another one was a drummer who was in a different band, but still a friend someone I was aware of. And they both died really recently. And about a hundred days ago, Venerable Wanji died. And a hundred days after someone's death, and we're actually a little short on that, but we're close, is an auspicious thing to mark on uh, in our practice so the thing is when i heard about each of these deaths i was sad you know i was a little bewildered i was somewhat gita like in my uh response sense of loss that empty feeling in the gut where you don't quite get it. And I would think about it. And then sometimes I would end up thinking about it again. <clears throat> but what happened is as part of, uh, as a result of these people dying has been that some other people that in some cases I hadn't spoken to in literally decades, came back into my life. We've been in touch. And that, on the other hand, makes me happy. It's all in my thinking. It's all dependent on how my brain decides it wants to function on any given day, whether it's sad about the death, happy about the people coming back into my life, whatever it is, it's all dependent on my thinking, dependent on causes and conditions. <sighs> Venerable Wanji had some core teachings as a, uh, a student of Sung San, and others in the uh, overall uh, Korean Zen approach, he would say that 
our practice is don't know. And our direction is how may I help you? Now, the don't know mind is <clears throat> basically Nan Quan, or excuse me, Zhao Zhou putting the sandals on his head, staying silent, and just blowing out of the room. He didn't think once about it. He didn't think twice about it. He just reacted according to his Buddha nature. One thing that Wanji was also fond of saying was, it's all good. Not in some sort of disregarding facts or occurrences, not according to some sort of Pollyanna-ish, uh, let's all teach the world to sing kind of approach, because if you ever met Venerable Wanji, you would not think of Pollyanna-ish as a word to describe him, even in the slightest bit. It's All Good was a ref reflection of equanimity, of not picking and choosing. I like this, I don't like that. Birth and death happen. They can make us sad, they can make us happy. Things in between can make us happy and sad. Our true Buddha nature is that we don't think about them in terms of making those choices. We accept rea rea reality as reality, and it's going to be reality without my validation of it at all. We don't have to settle for it. We don't have to sit idly by and say, oh, Ukraine is under attack. It's all good. It's more of a Ukraine is under attack. I acknowledge this. Reality is reality. Let me see if there's a way that I can help. So in conclusion, to Venerable Wanji and my two friends and my mother, Namu Jijang Bolsal, um, and I would like to think that we can hear Venerable Wanji channeling Bob Dylan which would be possible, by the way. Don't think twice, it's all good.